So he's got a BG. I'm the last BG. My brothers are dead, but I'm still singing songs that we used to sing on stage. I'm having fun, although I miss my brothers who wouldn't miss the ship and dressed in peace, Robin and Morris. Hey, Salmon Skins, and welcome to another episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. That was Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees, friend of the podcast, whom I asked would he mind singing the jingle. And Barry said to me, now this might not be the best Barry Gibb impression, he said, I don't know what to sing, Ed. What am I supposed to sing? And I said, just sing sing whatever comes into the top of your dome. And he said, what, like a freestyle gangster rapper? And I said, yeah, it was weird hearing those words coming out of Barry Gibb's uh, hairy face. But I said, yeah, just whatever comes to the top of your dome. Uh, just sing it on the microphone and then I'll leave you alone and I said that's just an example there and he said he was very impressed he was like oh I can't believe you did that how am I supposed to come up with something better so obviously what's on his mind is his brothers and the fact that they're dead so I'm sorry if I reminded you of your brothers being dead Barry but you know you could have sang about anything it seems that your brother's are at the forefront of your mind all the time, as they would be. Um, I've got brothers. Um, I sing sometimes with my brothers. Um, not BG songs. Maybe we should attempt a BG song. Maybe we should attempt some sort of three-part harmony. It'd be difficult, but I think we could pull it off. Maybe we could do it for the wedding. My wedding is uh, coming down the tracks, hurtling down the tracks. And it's a busy time. It's a busy time for all of us. Except you. Yeah, you. You're not busy. What are you doing? You're lying in bed. Listen to me. It's nearly noon. You've missed the whole morning. Why don't you get up and do something? That's my attitude now that I'm a father. Um, I hate people being born idle. Mainly because I'm just jealous of all the times that I was born idle. What a weird expression, bone idle. Where does that come from? Maybe I'll look it up and we'll have some actual knowledge on this actual podcast. Something happened the other day which annoyed me, and I don't know whether it's because I am a parent, but I was never one of those single people who complained about quote-unquote breeders. You know, there's this way of, um, quite frankly, it's dehumanizing to people who are parents, to call them breeders, as if that's all we are, are just the seed contained in our testes and the eggs contained in wherever eggs are contained in a woman. I don't know. I don't know these things. I'm a man. I don't need to know things about where women things are. Um, I'm I'm busy. I'm busy looking up where bone idol comes from. There's me typing it in. Bone idol uh, origin. Now, here's a bloody knowledge for you. Uh, Laziness that penetrates the very bones. Attested in 1836. Similar terms. Bone lazy. Bone sore. Bone tired. Bone sore sounds like a wrestler's name. It sounds like a WWF. And here comes bone sore. He doesn't have sore bones, but he'll make your bones very sore. It's not a great nickname for a wrestler, if you have to explain what it is. Um, Now, the Phrase Finder is a wonderful website that I would recommend. Uh, It's something that I've literally just opened now, and I've never heard of it before. So, uh, Robert Forby didn't quite define Bone Idol in his glossary, the vocabulary of East Anglia, in 1830, but he came very close. He uh, defined bone lazy, bone sore, bone tired. Um, Yeah, just to your bones. It's like being bone cold. You know when people say that? Oh, it's freezing, I'm bone cold. Or, God, I'm bone sweaty here. It's so hot, my bones are sweating. I'm sweating on my skin, but also 
sweat is coming out and on, it's on top of my bones and that's probably going to give me cancer and I'll die. So there you have it. Uh, the mystery solved. Bone idol. But I did hear some, or I say hear, I was mindlessly scrolling through my phone as I do as a human. Lots of us do it. You're probably doing it right now, maybe as you're listening to this. And that that's fine. People are very distracted these days. It's uh, something that I'm guilty of myself. But I did find myself... Uh, looking at, you know, I'm on TikTok, okay? Follow me on TikTok, guys. I'm a 23-year-old girl called Laura who does makeup tutorials. Um, so look for a hairy-faced 22-year-old. What did I say I was? 23, 22? Um, and, there's, you know, there's lots of stuff on TikTok. There's dances. There's uh, uh, sexy women uh, wearing bikinis. And uh, there's, you know... Um, hacks for the kitchen <laughs> you know it's not the same account obviously those are different separate accounts but uh, uh it was a podcast and there was a man and a woman and another man and uh, they were americans and they were just going on about people who have kids and how you know i'm too i'm too selfish to have a child which seems to be the kind of um, the standard issue, I don't know, excuse or reason, but there is this thing of, like, I don't... Uh, okay, right, when I didn't have children, and people had children, and they went on and on and on and on and on and on, and on, and on about their children, I would sort of phase out a little bit because I didn't have any reference, you know? Um, fair enough, I used to be a child myself, but that was so long ago, I, I can't, you know, I can't be expected to remember what it was like for me as a child or how I was as a child, because it's just a blur, like, you know, I mean, your brain isn't fully developed, but this thing of, you know, people complaining about people having kids, like, I don't complain about people being single i'm like or single childless single i mean you can be single and have a child i can't imagine doing that because it's t tough enough um to choose words i nearly said hard and tough so i nearly said chuff it's tough enough to have a child with uh two of you you know divvying out the sleeps and the nappy changes Although I do build 97% of those. And, you know, the pickups and the the rub downs and the uh, training. And when it comes to fight day and they've got to take down that other baby and you've invested a lot of time, you got a lot of money, you bankrolled the whole house and you want that baby to pummel the other baby. You don't want your baby pummeled. Um, because then the announcer will be going, you know, he ain't pretty no more. And that's it. You're done. You can't do the baby pageants, which is your side hus hustle from baby fights. Um, but it's hard. I mean, it's very hard. I, I have an awful lot of respect for single parents who manage to do it because it's really fucking hard. And when people say, oh, you just get on with it. What they're really saying is you get on with it and the thing you're getting on with is incredibly difficult and time consuming and energy zapping and uh, you just feel uh, bone tired all the time. Uh, with my new phrase. But I don't I don't say to people, I'm not like one of those people, that, oh God, you have to have children, it's such a joy. Like People can get joy wherever they want, people get joy from their work, people can get joy from their nephews and nieces. But this kind of, oh, I'm too fucking cool to even consider having kids. And I'm too, I'm just a big kid myself. How am I supposed to take care of a child? And oh God, these people, do you know how much it costs to raise a child? Do you know what the carbon footprint of a child is? And it's like, it's like and I kind of think, well, fuck you. Because you're only existing and speaking these words from your brain to your mouth hole. Because two people decided to fucking have a child. 
and you're the result of that. So you're basically telling your parents that they're fucking idiots and that you're the result of an idiotic decision that they made. If you don't want to have kids, fine, don't have kids. Just shut the fuck up about people who do have kids. I don't go on about your stupid single life where you're playing video games online and chatting to your friends. You know, I mean, that's fun. Uh, I enjoy doing that as well. <laughs> I'm not jealous. I swear I'm not jealous. Um, but, you know, you've got, I mean, like, th this is the joke of parents that, you know, uh, you book into a, a hotel with your significant other for a weekend and you get down to some heavy, hot and heavy sleeping. That's all you want to do. But I was like, I don't know, I'm just a little bit um, offended. Is not the right word. I don't want to use that word. I mean, look, semantics has gotten to a point now where you literally can't say anything or do anything or, you know, like any kind of slip up. People are afraid to that they're going to get cancelled and they're going to say the wrong fucking thing at the wrong time. And it's going to offend someone and it's it's going to snowball and suddenly you're you're out of the playground, the digital playground that is the Internet that everyone enjoys. And then suddenly you can't you can't go on the slides anymore. You can't even tweet about the slides and how dangerous they are and how the plastic that the slides are made out of, you know, the um, the manufacturing of those kills a hundred thousand trout every day shut the play hashtag shut the playground down hashtag language is important hashtag entomology hashtag facts don't care about your feelings hashtag the end i mean i think a lot of it is very transparently horribly stupid and racist and sexist a lot of this sort of online commenting and some of it is just bizarre to the point of, do people even realize what the fuck they're arguing about? Like, why are you arguing about these things? And plus, all of this stuff is documented. Internet's written in ink, and it can't be erased. And, you know, when thousands of years from now, aliens are sifting through uh, tweets and stuff, they're going to be like, so all these people were complaining that a mermaid was the wrong skin color and that was important to them for some reason no wonder their planet died if this is the shit they care about but it's not really it's just four people care about it and then it becomes an article on a website that people read for five minutes while they're having a shit and then they have to have an opinion on it whereas you can't just be sort of meh about stuff you can't be like eh whatever like i honestly literally don't care about the little mermaid remake i mean i don't think i've watched the original animated movie in years i don't think i've watched it all the way through but like there's a talking jamaican crab in it is that racist i don't know is jar jar binks racist i don't know he's offensive for other reasons to me, but not for his voice or his floppy ears. Because, I mean, I've never been to Jamaica, but I don't know if people have floppy ears over there. I don't think so. I don't believe so. Me said no, no. But, like, the arguments that some of the uh, racist people on Twitter and etc. were giving was that, you know, if a, if a mermaid lives deep under the sea where light does not reach, they would be very pale. So scient uh, scientifically, this is absolute bullshit. And I was just thinking, yeah, mermaids aren't real. But a lot of it, I mean, and this whole don't worry, darling, Harry Styles spitting on Chris Pine thing, which has been, you know, I mean, that whole movie, it doesn't, I mean, I've I've heard some reviews of it, um, I don't read reviews anymore. I just listen to podcasts, movie podcasts that give reviews. Uh, I'm too lazy to read 
but they were saying the movie's not great. Um, some good performances in it. Harry Styles is not that great in it. Maybe he was distracted, hmm? Because he was started a relationship with the director who's also in the movie, and she fired Shia LaBeouf, and he said she fired me and she said no he decided to walk away and then that became a sort of a semantic argument and then private uh, video messages from Olivia Wilde to Shia LaBeouf were released by him to sort of tell his side of the story um and he made the BBC but like I I don't really care about that stuff like it's all publicity for the movie, does it make the movie any better, or does it make more people go to the movies? You know, like my mum was talking about it the other night. Like my mum knows about it, but then again, she does read a lot of Daily Mail online, which is sort of terrifying. Um, but she was talking about it and going, like, like, "Who gives a shit about this and that?" I was like, "Well, I mean, you're reading about it. You know about it. It's out there. You know, it's like." If you're not online, you're not going to read about it, but you can't sort of escape it. But I don't know if I had Chris Pine on the brain, but what I did, I watched uh, two movies when I was at home. Um, I watched Unstoppable, which I had never seen before. It's a Tony Scott movie. It was Tony Scott's last movie in 2010 before he uh, passed away in 2012. And it stars Chris Pine and Denzel Washington, and it's based on a true story, uh, but they've made it more exciting with horses and explosions. Um, oh, there's horses in it, nearly get hit by a train. There's a runaway train, and they have to stop it. But the train's like, can't stop me, bitches. I'm, check the title, unstoppable. And it's like an hour and 40 minutes, and then I watched... Uh, and it's great. It's really good. It's um, It's got a great build-up. And then like the second half of the movie felt like I kind of had that same feeling when I watched Mad Max Fury Road, which is one big chase. It's like relentless and exciting. And the whole second half of the movie, when they decide to, you know, we're going to go chase this train down and stop it. And it just becomes... Uh, uh, well, I was going to say a roller coaster ride. It becomes something. What's something that's very exciting and fast and on tracks? Oh, how would you call it? It's an exciting train journey. A really pumped up, like when you're going to Cork, but Stephen Seagal is in the canteen, and then it's taken over by international terrorists, and you go, "No, it's Die Hard on a train." Unstoppable is not like that. It's not Die Hard on Train. It's um, it's really good. It's uh, it's a proper fucking movie, you know. That's not two and a half hours long, as all movies are. And then the following night, I watched another Tony Scott movie. I watched Beverly Hills Cop Two because I hadn't seen it in a while, and that was also very enjoyable. Not as good as Unstoppable, but very enjoyable. And there's something about sitting down and watching a movie from start to finish and it's over and that's it. And you don't have to watch another seven seasons of it. And there's not like, or even like 10 episodes of a Netflix special. It's kind of hard for me to get through. I've like, I've never in my life given up on shows as much as I have in the last while. And I think that's a consequence of there being so many things to watch that if something doesn't hold my attention, I'll give it like maybe two episodes. There are some things where I think 20 minutes into something, you know whether you're going to enjoy it or not. And more and more people are making the executive decision around 20 minutes in that this is not for me. And they'll just stop it and they'll say, look, I'm going to watch something else or there's so many things and, uh, you know, I have uh, a child or I'm childless. I have to spend time playing video games on the Internet or changing nappies. Those are the two things that people with kids and people without kids do. I'm just throwing a big blanket over everyone. I have a statement that's like a blanket. Here it comes. 
get covered in it and you're covered. So that's what I'd recommend instead of like I found that much more uh, emotionally uh, satisfying to just watch something that starts and ends and is a story well told. So I think I'm just going to try watch more movies and less uh, episodes of shows or even what I tend to do is I watch like YouTube videos, you know. It's it's so funny because I think like oh, I'll be up for another half an hour and I'll watch three YouTube clips of things or bloopers or a seven minute behind the scenes look at Spider-Man from 2002 and I should just watch an episode of something. Um, I have been rewatching Seinfeld. I'm on season seven of it now and uh, yeah, a great show. Some real edgy stuff there for a mainstream 90s, you know, TV sitcom. Because remember, we didn't have streaming back in those days. But like, uh, it's good. Yeah, I like I recommend it. It's dated horribly in some ways. But my God, George Costanza is just a funny, such a such a character. So good that Larry David had to sort of step out from behind him and go hey it's all based on me and here's 12 seasons of a show that maybe should have ended sooner shots fired at very successful larry david so guys listen i've rambled on enough this is too much this is um maybe too boring for some people but let's take a break and then we'll have some silly shit yeah what do you think huh yeah okay see you shortly bye hello to you my name is Eduardo Sanchez. Jays, I am an expert in the field of relaxing, stressing down, and chilling out. Many years ago, I tried to develop a chill pill, but I could not get it approved by the FDA, as it was full of mostly amphetamine. But today, people use the expression, hey, take a chill pill. That comes from me. Yes, I copyrighted the phrase before I knew the drug was too strong. So now I sell different chill pills. I sell audio chill pills. That's right. Do you find yourself relaxed? That's fine. Then shut up and move on. You don't need to listen to me. But if you find yourself stressed out in this stressful world, then why not? The temperature is rising on the planet. The water is running out. Pubs are turning off the heat and encouraging you to wear jackets. These are things that are happening now. Some people would say, if you're not stressed out, you must be crazy or an alien or some sort of sociopath serial killer who does not feel human emotion or empathy. If that is you, shut your ears and move along. But if you think you have something to listen to that might stress you a little bit less, then maybe the Eduardo Sanchez Relaxation Tape Series 1 through 29 is for you. For the low, low introductory price of $29.95, you can get all of these volumes. That's a little over one euro per volume. Each volume lasts for 7 to 117 minutes. That's right, lucky number 7. It appears a lot. So, if you want to do this, then go to my website. www.fullstop.eduardosanchezrelax.com Jesus, God... I'm so stressed out with these letters and packages that I have to deliver. Did you say deliver? I did. Well then, Patzer's Pigeon Parcels is the service for you. It's a place? No, it's a service where we supply pigeons. Pigeons, the oldest method of getting one thing from A to B and sometimes C. The post office can be slow. 
Post vans can break down, the bicycles can crash, postmen can be murdered by dogs. All of these things cannot happen to a pigeon as it's flying in the sky. What about sparrowhawks? That's a risk we're willing to take. So you take the risk on sparrowhawks? No. What if a pigeon is attacked by sparrowhawks and my package isn't delivered? Well, that's force majeure. Force majeure? Yes, an act of God. Oh. God made sparrowhawks. We didn't have anything to do with it. So if a sparrowhawks eats your pigeon and your package, you get a money back guarantee. Great. We guarantee we will take our money back. Oh, I have to pay in advance? Absolutely. A hundred percent money up front. No refunds or exchanges or refunds. You said that already. I know. Because we don't refund. Patzers, pigeon parcels for all your parcel needs. Yeah, shoot it, man. No exchanges or refunds. Will not refund if a sparrowhawk eats your pigeon or your parcel. Parcels are subject to. Subject to what? Well, I didn't hear any of that. You just mumbled the end of it. Guys, we are back from the commercial break. I don't know about that um, pigeon delivery system. Because, I mean, like, how how much can you trust a pigeon? You know what I mean? Pigeons are notoriously the rats of the sky, as people call them. And people seem to have a thing for pigeons and rats and flying rats, which are pigeons. But have you ever eaten a pigeon? Delicious. Now, I'm not talking about your city pigeons. I'm talking about your Moroccan-flavored pigeons. Flavored with the spices of Morocco. Pigeons direct to your door. Pigeon pancakes. Sponsors, Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. So there's a little mini uh, ad for you in the middle of all those other ads. So, guys, um, I think that's probably it for the podcast, unless something else happens. Oh, the phone's ringing. The uh, old-timey phone that I keep in the studio that occasionally rings, and uh, occasionally on the other end is uh, a celebrity friend of the podcast. So let's answer the phone and see who it is. Answer the phone, answer the phone. Hello, who's there on the Edwin Salmon of Knowledge hotline? Hello, Ed, it's me, your old friend, Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. Hello, Barry. Calling you <laughs> on the salmon phone, <laughs> not a phone that looks like a fish. No. Show is made of a fish. Sure. A fish is a dish. You should yeah. eat an odd ring. Yeah. You yeah. won't get far. If you're using a fish as a phone, sure, fish as a phone. Well, you really you went very high there. I did. You probably you could you could use your brothers. I could definitely use my brothers. And yeah. you know that was just a first pass. Okay. If you want a jingle for your for your phone, for my phone, a phone jingle for the phone. No, not for the phone. A jingle that introduces the concept. Of the Edwin Shaman of Knowledge phone. Okay, like a little, yeah, like a short little jingle. Yes. I mean, sure. But, yes. like, Barry, that wasn't very short. Okay, well, I can make it shorter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, how short? All right, well, yeah, sure, let's do, um, you know, like, f I don't know, five seconds or five so? Five seconds. Can you do five seconds? Can I do five seconds? I can read music. Sure. So I can do definitely five seconds. Okay, let me, yeah. let me have a go here. Um... Omega-3 is good for your heart, but that's gone over five seconds by far. Yeah, I mean... What do you think? It doesn't really mention the phone there, just the kind no. of a, a recommendation to get more Omega-3, which oh, is, yes. you know, hey, yeah, everyone, everyone could do with a little bit of Omega-3. Absolutely. I think it mm. would have shaved my brothers. I think my brothers would be here today. Really? If it wasn't for uh, a lack of omega-3 in their diet. That was the only problem. Although one of them did die was a botched mm. surgery complications. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you mm. know, I think 
You pour all the Omega-3 on that and it's not going to make it any better. Does it come in bottles? A big jar. It comes in a big jar. So you, yes. you buy your Omega-3 in a big jar. I do. I buy my Omega-3 in a big jar. Mm. I get it down in the Whole Foods section here in Florida. Oh, still living in I Florida. Live. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. Still living in Florida. Why are you pronouncing it that way? What do you mean? Florida? Yeah, people just say Florida, don't they? Yes, I'm saying Florida. Well, I mean, I think you're splitting hairs there, what? Ed. Splitting what? Splitting hairs. Ha- hairs. Hairs. Could you just say it slower? Hairs. Okay, that's even less understandable. I think you're trying to say uh, splitting hairs, but yes. let's, let's not fight about it. Splitting hairs. Um, Barry. Yes. How are you? How I'm are you ver- getting on? How I'm very, is very well. everything in Florida? Oh, Florida is great. It's, I, I mm-hmm. tell you, though, there's some dangers. There's some very real dangers here. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, for one thing, alligators. Alligators. Allegations of alligators are true. People are saying there's no alligators? Some people, well, look, you go on certain Facebook groups and they'll mm. tell you that alligators are nothing but uh, Stan Winston's uh, special effects team dressed up in rubber suits with animatronic controlled hedge right and that's a load of nonsense seems silly all right yeah. i know for one because an alligator drank all of my omega-3 an alligator drank all of your omega-3 oh. that's that's a shame because it's very good for you i know it'll live longer yeah i don't want it living longer it's my nemesis i mean you don't want that no you want your nemesis to sort of to die before you yes by my hand ideally yeah by my hand i say today okay mr alligator He's a mister. Well, I mean, we're not on first name terms. You don't know his first name. Even though I hate him. How do you know it's a man? Oh, it's always the men. A male alligator. Hashtag, not all men, but hashtag, all alligators. All men, all male attig- alligators. Alligators? Are you okay? I've, oh, look, I've had a few gins. You've had a few gins. And wh- why is that? Well, I've... Barry, d- there's some very why are you drinking news. gin? I'll tell you why. Oh, Thursday afternoon, as I, I'm recording this. I'll tell you why, because Coolio's passed away. Of course, yes. yes. I've, I've literally just heard it. Shad, very shad. Not too long ago, I mean, it's this morning, but it yes. hasn't really sunk in. Very young. Very young. Yes, he was only 59. Yeah. Which is one year shy of 60. You're right. And that's far too young. It is. Especially yeah. for a, an artist of Coolio's stature. Have you, did you ever work with him? No, I never worked with him. I would have loved to have worked with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know, but what I'd like to do, I've come on today just to, because yeah. I feel it's important. So many yeah. artists pass away, they and do. no one really uh, recognizes them. Yeah, they do. And Coolio is one of those guys. Yeah, you know, he had uh, Gangsters Paradise, mm-hmm. was one of his uh, songs, biggest hit, and he had several other songs as well. Did he? But I think Gangsters Paradise is probably his best known song for sure. Yeah, yeah. we used in the. Uh, the film Dangerous Minds, mm. starring Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, I think it's how it's pronounced. Pfeiffer. No, it's Pfeiffer. She's French, yes? No, she's she's American. Oh, I thought she was French. No, no, no. With a name like that? I know, I mean, it sounds French, but That's she's, shock. No, she's le- legitimately American. Wow. So did you ever meet uh, Coolio? Oh, I met Coolio, I mean, of course... You know, when mm. you're in the show business, uh, singing, yeah. entertainment uh, industry business, as yeah. I am. The what? Yes, the show business, singing, entertainment industry business. Okay. You come across every walk of life, mm-hmm. uh, rappers, uh, freestylers, mm. hip-hop dancers, mm. country and western singers, mm. line dancers, mm. violinists, okay, uh, quartet singers, right. doo-wop singers. The whole gamut. You run you yeah. run the gamut. So uh, I, I think I met him at the bridge. Okay. Oh, early, early 2000s, I think. I think uh, me and my brothers were there performing. And we were getting some sort of Lifetime Achievement Award. And of course, back when my brothers were still alive. Mm. And uh, Coolio came over to me. Oh. And he said... Uh, he approached you. Yeah, I was very surprised. He approached me. Yeah. And he said, Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees... And I said, that's me, that's my full title, that's how I introduce myself. And he said, uh, well, I wanted to give you your full title, full name, and the name of the band that you're in, because I respect you so fucking much. Can I swear on the podcast? Of course. 
He said, and I knew he meant it because he said fuck. Okay. And, you know, you always know if someone means it when they throw an old left bomb in there. Really? And he didn't really, he didn't really swear that much in his, uh, in his raps. No, he didn't. You know, he was clean. Yeah. He rapped about, uh, hmm. about uh, dying and teaching children in a school in the inner city, even if you're a French woman. American. Who is uh, apparently American. She is. And uh, he was, he was very, very nice. And I said, uh, hey, when he was leaving, I said, hey, stay cool, EO. Hmm. And, uh, you know, he didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, it wasn't very funny. No, not really. Maybe I shouldn't have said it. I still, sometimes, uh, you know, I regret that. In fact, when I when I heard that he'd passed away at such a young age, I thought to myself, ah, now I'll never have an opportunity to tell him another joke, a better joke. You know, I hope that wasn't his last thought as he was dying. He said, oh, Barry, Gibb, told me that terrible joke, and I'll never get over it. Hmm. I hope that's not what killed him. I, I haven't really so. read into it. I don't I don't like to read into it. It was a heart attack, um, I think, suspected. No, I just saw that he that he died, and that was enough for me. Well, I'm, I mean, he's dead. What's the point in going on about how? Well, I mean, I think it's uh, important in some sense. You know, I mean, he could yeah. have died... Uh, shooting up a library or something, oh, but God you know, he didn't. It was a suspe- suspected heart attack. I just okay. want to clear that up. Coolio, um, rest in peace. Yes, died of a suspected heart attack. Our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, all the Coolio family, Mrs. Coolio, friends. Yes, Coolio and his gang. Yeah, I don't think they were actually called that, but um, yeah, well, it, it's nice of you to call in, of course, and uh, pay tribute. To Coolio, I felt it was only right. Well, that's and very I'd nice. like to pay special tribute to Coolio. Oh, really? By doing my version of his number one hit, "Gangsters Paradise." Oh, okay. For the old Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees spin. Okay, so uh, yes. this is uh, Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming in, Barry. You're welcome. And uh, this is his version of "Gangsters Paradise." Take it away, Barry. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, come on. Uh, 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 As I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I take a look uh, at my life uh, and realize there's nothing uh, left. Cause I've been laughing and joking so long. Uh, even, even my mama thinks that, that my mind is gone. gone. Well, I ain't never shot a punk uh, that didn't uh, deserve it. Uh, Maybe treat it like a punk, you know, with a chin head. If you better watch how you're walking or where you're talking, or you and your homies might be lined in chalk. Look at the situation I got me facing. I can't live a normal life. I was raised by the hood, so I got to be down with the hood, see? Too much television watching got me tasting dreams. I'm an educated fool with money on my mind. Got my tin in my hand and the gleam in my eyes. I'm a low down, rounding, rounding, in the gas. When my homies are round, so don't arouse my anger, fool. Death ain't nothing but a heartbeat away. I'm living life through it, I. What can I say? I'm 23 now, but will I live to see 24 the way things are going? I don't know. Tell me why are we so blind to see that the ones we hate are you and me? Been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. Been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. Been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. Been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. Guys. That was Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees doing his version of Gangster's Paradise, obviously from memory, as uh, he got some of the lyrics wrong. Uh, But thank you to Barry for uh, phoning in. Thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Please consider becoming a patron for the price of a pint in a country pub a month. You get extra content. Uh, extra bonus stand-up stuff, extra bonus writing material. Uh, I'm writing things and putting that material on the uh, patrons page. You'll also get extra long episodes of the regular podcast, such as this one. 
it will end for you, the regular listener, but become a salmon skin and you get extra, extra stuff. So uh, take care, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.